This is a Neko Media Podcast. What's your pleasure, sir? Cinephiles and Cinobites to episode 7, These Boots Were Made for Walking. I'm your host, Annika P., Cinderella Hellborn, mother of Rendell, Dan Stevens enthusiast, and all that good shit. Welcome back to you regulars, and if you're new here, welcome to the show. Lots of spooky, sci-fi, thriller, adventure type programming on today's show. The boys Mox and Ono have a varied taste, so their selections can be eclectic. Ono recommends the program Vikings, while Mox recommends the end of the effing world. Mox also reviews a ghost story and Ono talking about the short film Trial by the brothers Lynch. They also do Mazes. A short video will be available on the Neko Media channel on YouTube, and they also list off their top 6 puzzle flicks. But today's main review goes to the newest Maze Runner film, The Death Cure. Listen to what they have to say on the final installment of this franchise. Slash tag configuration. Alright, welcome to this slash tag configuration. Uh, today we're going to be reviewing the latest and final installment in the Maze Runner series, The Death Cure, uh, directed by Wes Ball. Um, Wes Ball. And uh, written. He actually did all of them. Yeah, yeah, he did all three of them. That's, that's a good deal. Um,. And it was adapted by T.S. Nolan. And uh, the movie stars Dylan O'Brien. We have... Um, Ki Hong Lee. Ki Hong Lee. Oh, you're going to call him? Yeah, Ki Hong Lee. Okay. Is it Kaya? Kaya? I want to say Kaya. Kaya Scaldelario. And... Um, Scaldelario. What's his name? Oh, Thomas Brody Sangster. That's his name. Thomas, I just yeah. remember him as Love Actually in um, Game of Thrones, <laughs> kid. I love that guy. Who's uh, the the guy that we all are cheering for that came back? 
Gally. Gally. What's his Will name? Poulter. Will Poulter. Will Poulter. Will Poulter. Shout out huge. to uh, Will Poulter. He was the Will man Poulter is the next Michael Shannon. Any much. Yeah? Michael Shannon. Who's Michael Shannon? I feel Shannon? like he can play. Huh? Who's that again? Michael Shannon? Yeah. Um, fucking. Give me, a, give me a character. Take Shelter, or he was the newest bad guy in Man of Steel. He was General Zod. He was um, 99 Holmes. He was the bad guy. Nothing yet. Oh, hold on. Let That's me just okay. pull him up. Because <laughs> he's huge, dude. Michael Shannon? What? Was he the, the, the guy who played in, in Bug? Yes. Oh, okay. Is for it? real. Of all the movies, you remember him from Bug? Yeah, that was such yeah, a good I'm movie. Sorry, I yeah, Bug. <laughs> I fucking hated Bug, but Ooh. yeah, he's dope in it. Nice. Okay, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, the so Will Bug. Poulter is the next Michael Shannon. The next Michael Shannon. Wow. I feel like he's intense. He's villainous, but yes. there's also something about him that you want to love or care about. Mm, true. Nice. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was like the the best part of the movie. Pretty much. Yeah. As soon as Galley came back in, I was like, okay, so good thing I stayed awake. <laughs> Finally, something <laughs> worth watching. All right. So, pretty much, this movie is a direct sequel to the Scorch Trials. So, Scorch Trials, um, they all, you know, gather up and. Oh, whole... shit. Did, we didn't see uh, Rosa Salazar. Oh, Rosa Salazar is in this. And sense. Giancarlo Esposito and Patricia Clarkson. Oh, oh and nice. Aiden Gillen from fucking. <laughs> Game of Thrones okay. and Barry Pepper, everybody. All right, all right, yeah, we got a good cast, good cast. Uh, returning characters, um, and actors. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much a direct sequel. So, the whole, the simple, the simplest premise is, let's go save Mino. So we knew that at the end of Scorch Trials, and that's pretty much the whole movie of Death Cure. They, that not, is the whole movie. <laughs> the the Death Cure doesn't is is really just a minor subplot. <laughs> really? Kind of the only thing that the bad guys want to do. They they want to. They're holding Mino so they can extract and create the serum that will cure the fucking what they call the fucking their virus leprosy. I don't know. What is the virus? Uh, oh, flare. Oh. They call it the flare. Okay. Yeah, and the the protagonists, the good guys camp, don't even give a fuck about doing the cure. Really, they just want to get their homie back and escape to a tropical island yes well because then it turns out all these kids are immune so they can't get sick so they're really well, just most of them right yeah most of them yeah true yes yes um so yeah they're, that's... all the ones that got taken at the end yeah all and shows. so there's actually a different sort of crowd so you got the people in the city you got mm. um thomas and Maniac. company and then you got the freaking the Outlanders, all that, the, the, the Mad Max Fury Road guys, like this. this is like... I know the guys who just want to watch the world no, burn. They're they're pretty much all the guys from Cyborg. Like this movie much, could act I mean, as a prequel to Cyborg. Like <laughs> they just want the world to burn. They were, like, I like this world. Fuck civilization. Yeah, I like this misery. Yours. Yeah, they want the misery or whatever. Like I they like get pretty murdery in the third act. Yeah. Like. I'm so, talking terrorism style murdery. Like they're fucking taking down apartment buildings yes. and condos, you office think buildings. The reason why they want to get into the city is to um get a, a piece of the resources. The food, the water, the medication. No, they, right, they right. end up fucking Nope. <laughs> they just want to murder it. I just wanna <laughs> tear it down. I wanna watch it burn. You know, that's that's the all the that's all the jokers of the world, right? They just wanna watch stuff burn. Basically, yeah. <laughs> They can't be reasoned with. They can't be intimidated. What are you, Terminators? These are Terminators. They just want to... It can't be reasoned with. <laughs> like, and they don't reveal that until they actually get in. I feel like this is not a spoiler. You knew eventually they would get in, but it wasn't revealed what their plans were until they're in the fucking city. Like, yeah. it seems like they just want to get in, maybe get the cure for themselves, or maybe just have a part of this utopia or this fake utopia, but nope. No, they... Just, they just... want to spread the fucking misery. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, and there's actually like they, it's it turns out you can build safe zones. That's it's that's like it, it feels like that's easy. Like there's still money in the world, or resources to do that, but they all wanted to concentrate their efforts on trying to find this cure instead. Yeah, um, this doesn't do as good a job as um, 
Mad Max as far as setting up the way in which commerce or trade works mm. in this apocalypse because it's very easy. They trade resources in Mad Max, right? Water, yeah. guns, gas, bullets, gas. In this one, I guess money still has – there's still some sort of economy. Yes, that's true. Yeah, there is. I mean – they're still civilized, which is um, I would say good. You know, they 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 didn't um right right they didn't snap yet or just give up. But I think at we're one not point, just the band of pirates. Right, all yeah. of us. Yeah, there's a place where they still have protocols and yeah, like there's still rules. <laughs> there's still rules. It's, we didn't get into Lord of Flies territory yet. <laughs> well, by that third act, though. But, uh, <laughs> No, that's cyborg rules. That's cyborg rules. Like, right? what the fuck? My God. And I'd be pissed if I was like, y'all, if you, <laughs> we can make a spot for you. You just got to be civilized, man, and do your part. It's it's no escape rules. We'll, we'll put you in exile. <laughs> We're going to banish you. <laughs> well, right? They're yeah. like, fuck them. But I, I, I wonder if they just did it, burn the world down, because by the end, we find out that that new city has been infiltrated by the flare disease anyways right you know they're unable to keep it out permanently yeah so basically the whole utopia is fucked got airborne what is airborne yeah that's difficult to um contain really i also feel like they introduced monsters in the scorch trials that they didn't even bother to reinforce yeah. or bring back they're actually the there part. for like just a small part and at that point it's like i think they've dealt with them enough to where it wasn't like a scary moment for them. It's like let's let's just keep driving, let's keep going. Mm. And um, there's no more mazes, but there's a lot of running down halls in this one. Very <laughs> lots, true. Lots of tunnels, lots of hallways, and yeah, they 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 still running. What staircases? <laughs> yeah. But like, so yeah, the whole movie. So the beginning, we 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 see that, um, they're here to do what they plan to in the, the second movie, which is save Mino. And that's like maybe 70% of the movie. And they could have just cut it there once they got them out done. But this movie, what it is, what I didn't like about this movie is that it, it um, overhyped or over exaggerated. It lingered. It did. I feel like it lingered too long at the end, and not because it needed to tie shit up, like Lord of the Rings: Return of the King. Like, yeah, they didn't give us an extra twenty minutes to like tie up things that were unfinished. They just gave us an extra twenty minutes to like stew in the fucking uh, emotionality or the melodrama of right. all the losses that we felt. Because like in a like an like one in those movies where where it's like an epic battle and it ends when there's victory mm -hmm. it, in this one it does that but then we also get the after party which is usually inferred but we we see it and then i think it's to build on the connections between the characters which is um almost unnecessary like we know they're tight but then we get that um that, like that extra, yeah, twenty minutes of all. Oh, this... And then we get the voice of the voiceover letter that he reads, and, and which you was... know the dead character's voice, like reading off his <laughs> goodbye list or his letter. <laughs> that could have been a deleted scene, mission. but like, <laughs> like they they could have cut that out. They could have cut it out right when they left. You know? Right. Also, too many wanna be poignant deaths within a uh, too short a time frame. Oh, yeah. like right at the end, I feel like. They tried to make it you know, significant where there wasn't, it wasn't. There really either. wasn't. It yeah. was pointless. One, I feel they scored on. And then the other was just like, okay, I'm tapped out emotionally. I don't give a fuck. Plus, that character was kind of a fuck character anyways. Right. Yeah. And I, I think, yeah, all of this was to just kind of. Um, manipulate. Manipulate. I think it, it kind of stretch out the screen time. Of these characters and their relationships, where it's, yeah, this movie is over two hours long, yeah. and it just totally didn't have to be. Like, yeah, it, it could they could have broke it down to maybe two, maybe hour forty five. I would have took an hour forty five, a nice, yeah. lean 
tight script and I'm out. You know, I'm like, all right, yeah. we got an ending. But it's not a boring movie. Like, it's very... It's not, but yeah. I feel um, they kind of, uh, in the middle and the end is where my problems are. Like, from the opening, they get you going. Like, I didn't fall asleep and we saw, like, the late ass showing. <laughs> so it keeps you up. Oh, yeah. And then the middle... <laughs> The middle lag for me, but that's also when they reintroduced Galilee. So that's kind of what kept me oh, yeah. interested. That was like a, a picker up or like, oh shit. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Galilee's back. Finally, yeah. we're gonna get some action. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were dead, yeah. I was like, wait, he died. And then they, they kind of that was kinda of like a running joke. Like, I stabbed you the last time I saw you. <laughs> like, yeah. like, hey, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> like, all right. They glossed over that one really, like, minimally. But I was like, whatever. I was just yeah. glad to have Galley back. Yeah, yeah. He's a cool dude. Um, And, yeah, it, it, it's, it doesn't drag. Um, And the, let's see, the uh, the effects are really very, very tight. Um, All that machinery and the sound effects, mm-hmm. good sound. Um, and... Yeah, like, like it's good performances by everyone. I mean, yeah. um, but it's it's a five book series, so they they I'm wondering if they put in a lot from like, you know, the remaining three books into like one movie. You know? I'm thinking they cut out a lot of stuff that maybe would have made it more interesting. Yeah. Just would have upped the budget and the timeline. Yeah, and you get a sense of timeline when they're actually planning to try to break Mino out, because they're like, it took six mm-hmm. months to plan this. You want to do this in a week? It's like, all right. And maybe yeah. what they can do is release like uh, anime to like fill in the in between <laughs> plots that they cut out. The um, the Anna Maze Runners. <laughs> the anime <laughs> the, the, the anime runner. The anime Maze Runner. Anna Maze Runner works. Anna like Maze Runner. Okay, let's write that down. Runner. Anna Maze Runner. Twenty nineteen prequel to. The Maze Runner. <laughs> yeah. oh. Buy that video game. Yeah. But yeah, it's um I, I think it's a entertaining movie. Um uh visually stimulating. Very um yeah. when I say action packed, I mean there's like a lot going on. Um but there are, are a couple cool fight scenes in this one. Um but mm. but with regards to like some of the material in there that, like this, they could have trimmed this down a lot. Um, yeah. A lot of it unnecessary, and I think it's, it's sort of borderline cheesy. But um, we get a sense mm. of the uh, the bond between the characters, which is nice. But um, final thoughts on Maze Runner? It's not a terrible movie, and it's definitely a watchable popcorn kind of flick. But I just because movies are so expensive these days, and because we only got so much time. I'm definitely got to give it a no watch. What am I going to say? Um, <laughs> this is tough because it's either you watch it or you don't. Um, we pick in extremes. Yeah, I know. But yeah, it's overtly. Um, not cheesy is the word, but um, two. Some parts Too are sweet overtly. Baccarine. Dramatic, melodramatic. melodramatic. Yeah, it, it does that on um, a lot of parts when it's unnecessary. So I'm gonna have to say no watch CC. Oh, this is the first one that's gotten a double no watch. I think. Well, other than um, Day of the Dead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, two back to back movies, no watch. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, avoid it. It'll be on Netflix soon enough, I think, or you know, Prime. Catch it then. But as far as theater. Definite no watch CC. Hey, how's it going? I'm an afraid of the Taking the Lead Media Podcast. You know, broadcasting from the island of Oahu. Here on the podcast, I release weekly playlists of mostly punk rock and hardcore tunes, occasional ska and indie rock, 
all independent music local here in Hawaii, around the country, and the rest of the world. Just recently, I've also had guests on the show, including local friends and rock bands, to record label heads and distributors. This is an Apple podcast, so do please check out the show on iTunes. It's also streaming on YouTube, search Taking the Lead Media, and on Tumblr at oneshotsideshow.tumblr.com. Hit me up on Twitter at TTLM Podcast and say hi sometime. You can also stream current and past episodes on this podcast website, takingtheleadmedia.com. On this next segment, Mox and Ono recommend programming exclusive to popular streaming services here on Kicking and Streaming. All right, well, welcome to this Kicking and Streaming. For my recommendation, I have the series Vikings, part of the History Channel, which recently concluded its fifth mid-season finale, season five. The series is created by Michael Hurst, and it stars a very large ensemble, uh, but I'll just give you the key players. Uh, Gustav Skarsgård, yeah, Catherine Winnick, Alexander Ludwig, and Travis Fimmel. Uh, so there's lots of other key characters, key players, uh, key actors, but these are, I guess, the main ones uh, in terms of maybe just season two and a little bit of season, or season one and a little bit of season two. Um, the first four seasons, though, center around Fimmel's character, Ragnar Lothbrok, a legend of a Viking. Uh, in the show, he's portrayed as ambitious and very driven to explore uncharted territories. Initially, it seemed he wanted to enrich himself with knowledge and a bit of wealth, uh, and he still does uh, throughout the seasons, but his ambitions grew as he took his family and people out further west of their world. So aside from being a great warrior and leader, he is the son of a farmer and a farmer at heart. So land and agriculture are very important and vital for his people when immigrating to other parts of the world. And so the premise of this series takes inspiration from the progressiveness of these people. I thought season one was going to be all about these Vikings, you know, uh, traveling just west. And um, but the, so the story goes every summer they would actually travel east to do their raids, you know, collecting gold resources and whatnot. No one traveled west due to the vast openness of the ocean. So it was all uncharted. Only Ragnar Lothbrok um, had the idea to do so. And he co- he accomplished this feat by the end of episode two. So <laughs> it was really quick. I thought it was just going to be the whole season. And it was just going to be just that feat. So time goes by quick in this series. Like in months and years. Um, just think how long it took to build a ship. You know. Chopping down trees, shaping the boat, testing it out, making adjustments. Now I got to make another one. And you know, with primitive and carving tools. dragon heads. Yeah, right. And in season one, it's only one guy who's like the main engineer. So, <laughs> but if you've got the time and the crew, you can do a lot. Just look at the pyramids. <laughs> anyway, that's what Aliens. I found, <laughs> found fascinating about this series. They didn't waste time with anything. These guys are just always working, you know, and as a society, these people are very aggressive too, almost unmerciful when it comes to war. Of course, they're like the Klingons of humans. They live by a strict code of honor and are always respectful and and fearful of the gods they worship. And among the men and women, well, there seem to be, well, there's sort of equality between the genders, you know, in terms of their contributions to society, to society, uh, there are women warriors called shield maidens, and they take part in battle and raids just as the same as men. In family settings, though, there may be often times, you know, often there's quarrels between the parents as, you know, who has to stay home and watch the kids, tend to the farm while the other one goes out and raids. But there are also slaves in this That's series. That's pretty dope. Yeah. Um, and you can pretty much do anything you want to the these slaves. You can rape, kill, beat, and that's perfectly fine. Like, it's it's crazy what they can do and will do sometimes. The battle scenes in the series are awesome. Uh, bloody as hell, gruesome, and sometimes cringeworthy. Lots of axes and sword action for sure. 
and it's a nice balance of war and drama. Lots of drama. You have infidelity, betrayal, medieval politics, and people are always striving for power. You know, they'll stab you from behind if it gets them to the top. So it's a tough journey to the top. And once you get there, it's all about trying to maintain that title without someone from the bottom trying to take it from you. Um, with each passing season, uh, the story expands and expands, persistently introducing new characters and subplots. It's epic on many levels and wildly entertaining. The battle sequences are raw and terrifying, and the stories be full of drama and more drama. Uh, Vikings is currently on its fifth season, a History Channel original, but it's also streaming on Amazon Prime. You watch CC. You're like in love with that show. <sighs> yeah. But, um, our, how uh, are they on nudity and shit like that and sex scenes, gratuity, you know, gratuity? There's, there's sex scenes, like they'll start it off and then mm-hmm. everything's inferred after that. Okay. Um, so we're this... not talking Game of Thrones or Rome no, or anything no. like that. And plus, it's History Channel, too. So, um, there is no nudity, but they, they, they'll show skin, you know. Um, yeah, and a lot of it's in, well, and then there's that rape scene. Well, air quotes rape scene between um, Catherine uh, Winnick and one of the kings. Like, oh, and she rapes him, right? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, he's, yeah. he's in shackles. Like, technically it's a that. rape for like five seconds. And then I think he's like, he's into it. Well, you can't say he's into it because he's just sitting there and he's tied up in chains. So he can't like push her off. So I think technically technically it's a rape yeah i i it sounds kind of rapey i'm just having a hard time wrapping my mind around Catherine winnick raping a man yeah um and there are other parts where the women characters are very um not gropey but they'll more grabby grabby would be the word yeah um and it's um more of a uh a sign of power i think and kind of entitlement and that's why they they're free to kind of do that kind of stuff because all, all the women who do that what i've seen at so far um are like queens yeah so they're the ones who get yeah. grabby yeah they, they're the ones that get grabby and like what's the scope of uh their civilization size size like you know uh how big is one um chieftains i guess village or whatever um, we're talking yeah clans or hun- um i'd say probably in the in the hundreds oh, okay yeah um a thousand people's large um from what I, like in season one it looks like it's in the hundreds um not like thousands but like hundreds and still like you just gotta think like two yeah they're, they're building everything from scratch like so that's why i think like, they don't mess with, like, when they traveled west for the first time. Like, not much time was spent, like, showing what they did out in the ocean. Like, so I, I think it's inferred. <laughs> that was a really long trip, <laughs> you know, mm. when they went to, like, England and stuff. And you already know their unmercifulness when they pretty much kill off, like, a whole, um, like, group of monks. <laughs> yeah but and like they're unarmed oh, had it coming yeah but like they don't know that they are monks and like people of you know the um, cloth or whatever yeah so that that has no clergy yeah like um it doesn't matter really but then Ragnar Lothbrok takes one as a slave and it's really cool because then that monk pretty much transfers or transforms really from like a man of God to like almost Viking status <laughs> because he becomes really cool with, you know, his master and, um, his family. And he becomes like his pretty much his best friend and Ragnar Lothbrok, um, uh, converts to Christianity just cause in the afterlife, he knows that by doing so, he'll get to meet his friend again. So like, Oh wow. Yeah, I know. Right. They're a bit of a, Oh, you know, when like when under um, undercurrent, it's crazy because um. So when he takes him as a slave, right? 
um, mm-hmm. Ragnar Lothbrok and um, Winnick are, are having sex, like right in the next room. And then he goes to the, the monk and he's like, do you want to join us? <laughs> like a wow. like total threesome. Hard. And like Catherine Winnick is like showing leg, right? Like she's like into it too, that's why, right? And then he's like, uh, no, it's a sin. <laughs> he was tempted, and- but yeah. But he didn't. He didn't go through. And also, Ragnar is with uh, Winnick. Yes, that's his wife. They're like that's they're like the power couple. Um, so they're they were actually just a normal your average couple. Um, and then when he rose to the top, you know he she ta- or she was with him, but then it got to the point where, like, I don't know if he was like, th- this is the infidelity part where he kind of hooked up with another woman. And then he tried to, he wanted to be like, he wanted two wives. And you don't do that unless you can take care of both, right? So he's like, this makes sense. And it's sad because her character can't have kids anymore. Like, they have two uh, kids. Winnick or the other one? Uh, Winnick. Yeah, so she's unable to bore uh, or bear any more children. So they have two. But this other woman gives Ragnar um, four sons. Oh, man. So, that, so that's why he wanted another wife. In a sense, like, just so he can have more kids. Um, which is like, does that elevate? Oh, does that elevate the the wives station like in Chinese concubine? Like, oh yeah, she she wasn't has... down with it. Yeah, they're still like, no, I don't want you <laughs> with another woman. So she actually leaves, and the Winnie. son, uh, yeah, and the son goes with her, right? And so like, <laughs> two episodes later, like I think like five years pass, right? And and their son pretty much grows like two feet tall, so he's like he's a full blown man already. Full blown man, like he's Viking status already, and like and it's a new actor, right? So, um, and he's like thick too and everything, but like they they still give him shit because he can't grow a beard. Uh-huh. So I think technically he's like only twenty, but you know he's got like <laughs> he looks like he's thirty. <laughs> Just with no beard or yeah. no five o'clock shadow even. Yeah. And um and no Ragnar's time. brother is the freaking badass. Like these oh, yeah. Vikings, like he'll he'll get run over by a horse and give him maybe like a he'll month or two him. and and he's he'll get back. Like he'll fully heal. <laughs> like like well, nothing can kill this guy. Huh? And that's his older brother. His older brother is the one that's the backstabber. Yeah, so it's like all the not riches but like all the good things are happening to Ragnar and not his older brother and I, I think he's kind of envious of that and so he'll do pretty much anything in a sense like like to try and gain more power but then it, mm-hmm. it all resolves later but then it gets interesting because then he joins like the um the French in like season 3 like you see this Viking wow. trying to learn French. <laughs> He's like, "Set that three pack Okay, no, oh, but good it's, on him. It's a good series, though. I like it a lot. Cool. Okay. Um, for my kicking in streaming, I got the end of the effing world. I saw the created by. <laughs> yeah, I love the trailer. Uh, created by Jonathan Entwistle. Written by Charlie Covell, Covell, one of those, based on the graphic novel by Charles S. Scoresman. It stars Jessica Barden, Alex Lothar, Unmi Mosaku, and Gemma, or Gemma, Whelan. So James, a pale and wiry 17-year-old who kills little animals and harms himself in order to feel something, meets Alyssa, also 17, who hates her life, her school, her family, her town, and pretty much everyone in it except for James, who she immediately takes an interest in. Uh, They decide to escape their mundane lives by stealing James' father's car and taking a road trip to surprise visit Alyssa's biological father, who she has not seen in years. So right from the trailer, I knew this was going to be a series for me, except for the killing little animals part. Uh, But I don't think he killed anything as big as like a cat or especially a dog. So if that truly is the case, he gets a pass. You know, there are very few things I can't stomach narratively or cinematically, and killing dogs is one of them. 
Uh, but I'm, I think he's cool. I think the biggest he kills is like a rat or a bat. So they're fucking gross anyways. Anyway, my favorite graphic novel of all time is a little piece of cutesy carnage called Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. And the end of the effing world feels similar. It feels like it's in a similar vein, but more coming of age, British and less cartoony. It's still very dark, though, but it has an emotional thorough line that's really the heart of the story. You know, two lonely kids wanting to connect to something, anything that will give meaning to a hostile, vacuous world. Also, if you like ironic, understated British humor, you'll find a lot to laugh at here. Some of the situations and circumstances are hardly British in the sense that they're over the top. But the irreverent deadpan with which the characters respond and react are quintessentially British. So without giving too much of the plot away, the adventure begins when our protagonists meet each other. Alyssa sees someone she thinks she could fall in love with. James is looking for his first human victim and decides Alyssa will do. As you can imagine, the beginning action is driven by Alyssa. She instigates the stealing of James' father's car. She subsequently causes the crashing of it. Uh, James' character does an arc toward the less psychotic and more active as the episodes progress. And all, although dark and subdued, we care for and empathize with him and realize that he's not a sociopath. It's kind of just a label he threw on to categorize himself being, because being something shitty and scary is better than being nothing at all. So like most coming-of-age stories, this one deals heavily in identity and self-discovery. And we, as the audience, get to see the pair of misfits as the layers get peeled off as their situation escalates from bad to worse. Um, so there's a lot to love. It's more heartwarming than it seems. But I would definitely recommend this dark, quirky, indie as fuck adaptation. Season one is streaming on Netflix. You'll watch CC. Wow, so, okay. So it's just about a two friends who get together and just... Do shit. It's basically um, natural born killers without being full blown. You can't come back from it. Mm, okay. Wow. And this is British. Yeah. So <laughs> a lot of it is. <laughs> a lot of the humor is just kind of like. Uh... Oh, okay. Right on. Okay. Cool. But yeah, it's good and it's short. It's like eight episodes at 23, 21 minutes a piece. So I mean, you can finish it. In one go, one evening. <laughs> right on. All right, cool. Don't go down that road. It's a horror movie podcast. Welcome to Don't Go Down That Road Horror Movie Podcast with John and Rachel. I'm John. And I'm Rachel. And we are glad to be a Phantom Podcast Network member that you can find on downrightcreepy.com. Downright. Downright. <laughs> Rachel, what do we do? Well, we're a podcast that takes two horror films with similar themes. And we put them in a figurative fight at the end. So it doesn't matter if the movie was good or bad. It's just kind of based off character development slash what we've just watched and made fun of. <laughs> That's right. We review. Yay. Yay. But we also get special guests to help us out sometimes. And sometimes we do special interviews with people in the business. Yes. We also do some reviews sometimes. It depends if we watch the movie we want to talk about. Mm -hmm. But we do lots of things. And we love our listeners to always be involved. So we're always open to suggestions and opinions, I guess. Dot com, or you can check us out on iTunes and Stitcher or even Google Play. But most importantly, check them out on Phantom Podcast Network on DownrightCreepy.com. Rachel, where else can they find us? Well, y'all can take a gander at our social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at DGTR Podcast. That's correct. So, uh, thanks, and we hope you guys enjoy our show eventually. And remember... Don't go down that road. This next segment features a full-length movie review here on Secular Insanity. So for this secular, I have the film A Ghost Story, written and directed by David Lowry, starring Casey Affleck and Rooney Mara. A recently deceased man haunts the house he inhabited with his wife for years after she is gone as the world changes and time devolves into a repeating circuit. So first off, I wanted to like this movie because the trailer was so mysterious and almost kind of hilarious. Like a dude literally in a white sheet creeping around all ghost-like. Sounds stupid. And I could tell that this... <laughs> I could tell 
this is usually the kind of film I hate, you know. But anyway, I put it on, and I was right on all accounts. The white sheet is stupid and kind of hilarious. The film is mysterious, and this is usually the kind of film I hate. This is the kind of film that most people hate. The first rule of drama is conflict, and the first rule of cinematic drama is external conflict. This film has absolutely no external conflict until the third act when his house finally gets demolished to put up some new office building skyscraper or some shit. But as everybody knows, that is way too late in Western three act structure to start introducing a central conflict. You know, by that point, we should be moving into the resolution. But what's special about this film is that it works, it like defies cinematic narrative conventions you know it goes against every trope of american cinema and it still fucking works there's like little dialogue there's even less action and there's no narration the only diegetic clues we get come from like the moody score which is totally boss by the way the filmmaker manages to put us into the skin or sheet rather as is the case of the protagonist and we watch through a lonely lens as everything he and you know we knew and love slowly disappear. And like the protagonist, whose name is only the letter C, we transition abruptly through time, feeling as lost and alone. And the fact that we are in the same location, but at different times works nicely because it gives an uneasy juxtaposition between the familiar and the unfamiliar in his house, in his land, in his life, and ultimately in himself. And to do that visually without the help of a lot of talking or cheating ass narration, I think it's, a big time challenge and the director just nails it so you see as he sees and you feel as he feels and it's the distance between you and the character is so minute you know there's no room even for the holy ghost so i would definitely recommend it it's on uh, prime and probably hulu too it's a uh, you'll watch cc all right all right welcome to the exploding heads horror movie podcast oh, Dave, episode number Dave. Oh, what? the phone there, man. This isn't a show. It's a promo. Oh, sorry. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. Wait, a, a porno? With just the three of us? Oh. Well, I guess I'm game if you guys are. No, no, no you idiot. A promo. Oh, promo. I, I knew that. I was just cracking wise. Okay, can we do this now? Ah, wait. Looks like I lost my notes. What are we going to do? Of course. Okay, look. I'll, I'll handle this. All right, everybody, I'm Christian. You may know me from TJF13, this guy over here. That's Dave Z. You may know him from Banana Laser, The Skeleton Crew, the ABCs of Hidden Horror. And this guy, this guy over here, that's Brandon. That's Brandon? That's it? That sucks, man. Yeah, what the hell's with that? There's nothing else you can say? No, not really. Well, he's quick with a joke. Or a light of your smoke. But there's some place that I'd rather be. Ah, who cares about us? Let's say something about the cast. Okay, cool. We're the Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast. We review, dissect, critique, and make fun of horror movies new and old. Sounds a little bit cliche, but I guess it's okay. Dave, why don't you tell them a little bit about some of our big shows, like the 40 Years of Horror, our Top 50 Slashers, even our classic format of pairing a new and an old movie together. Yeah, and how I have to edit like three, four hour shows twice a month just because we watch and review so damn much. Yeah, and how we do feature length reviews, shorter length, round robin reviews, top 20 topics, and a lot of fun interaction with listeners. That about covers it. All right, sounds good, guys. I knew we could do it. Tell the fine folks out there where to find us, Dave. Oh, yeah. Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast can be found on Horrorophilia.com, the Horrorophilia Network, LegionPodcast.com, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, and anywhere that fine podcasts are heard. All right, that's a wrap. Now, guys, tell me, what's the deal with this uh, porno? Are you the caboose or the engine? Them's the jokes, folks. <laughs> This next segment features a short film review, here on The Shortest Straw. For this Shortest Straw, I have the 2016 short film, Trial, written and directed by the brothers Lynch, that is David and Keith Lynch. The film stars Tom Cullen, Anna Ularu, Joseph Mole and Aki Kotabe. Trial is set sometime in the future, maybe not so far ahead considering the current speed of advancements in technology. Aaron, 
played by Molly, is a quadriplegic former soldier who is given the opportunity to participate in a medical procedure that will bring him back to his former physical state. Although, as it is pitched by Jennifer, played by Ularu, Aaron will not be the same ever again. In Aaron's current state, depressed and with thoughts of suicide, he is willing to undergo this treatment. Wars need soldiers after all, as Jennifer puts it. Aaron wakes up in a new body, a human body mind you, nothing cybernetic. He's making adjustments to the new skin, both physically and mentally, walking around and admiring himself in the mirror. Now with the new body, a whole new life awaits him, but now he's experiencing blackouts, brushed off as possible sleepwalking. Now there are dead orderlies and soldiers after him uh, who want him dead. So what's going on now? It seems that this new body came with a price. And how much is it going to cost him? The thrilling element of the short is these short spurts of uh, blackouts and holes in the character's memory. It's mysterious and cold, most emphasized by the intensity of the score and dramatic beats on these characters' expressions. The story takes a dark turn and stays that way until the film's conclusion. The film takes inspiration from Christopher Nolan's Memento and will be further developed into a full-length feature. Trial is streaming on Vimeo and YouTube and is also available through the Dust Network. Yo, watch CC. Okay, so be sure to come on down to necromedia.com and check out the indie horror film reviews by Meredith Brown. There's at least two a week and a lot of them are from movies that have not even released yet and are exclusive to the site. They're awesome and informative and it's introductory to a lot of unknown and just making the radar filmmakers so please check it out nickelmedia.com all right this upcoming segment is the wild card segment in which anything goes schrody's ladder Alright, for this Schrodi's Ladder, be sure to visit our YouTube channel, search Neko Media. Uh, we'll be doing a, a series of mazes uh, in celebration of Maze Runner, the Death Cure. Check it out. Alright, time for intermission. And just so you don't forget who you're listening to, let me remind you with this. All right, this is the final segment of the show. It features the top six of whatever category Mox and Ono choose. Here, Seno 6. The box, we came. Now you must come with us. Taste our pleasures. All right, welcome to this Seno 6. Uh, today we're going to be listing our top six puzzle movies. <laughs> and we're going to, for me, I'm going to list them from difficulty rating. So from easiest to hardest. I guess in, in, a, in a sense, if I were stuck in that particular scenario, um, mm. how difficult would it be for me without knowing anything <laughs> right. like beforehand? <laughs> Um, but before we get started, uh, if you hear this, our picks are different. And if you hear this, it means our picks are the same. Top six puzzle movies, go! All right, so at number six, <laughs> I have uh, <laughs> Hellraiser 2. <laughs> oh, um, okay. I mean... Like, if I was stuck in a labyrinth, know. like... I would just go straight ahead. <laughs> I guess. I mean, we guarantee you get lost in Larynth, but I feel like yeah. as a viewer of that, I mean, there's no real way we could have solved it or stayed along. I mean, yeah, mostly Tiffany kind of just 
figured out the configuration. But yeah, I mean, if you're talking about being in that shit, that's just totally fucked up. Yeah, I mean, that one. You can, you know, it you can mark up walls, the drop breadcrumbs, do whatever. But I think at that point, it's just <laughs> staying alive more than trying to find a way out. <laughs> that's true. Um, or, you know, finding some way to just die on quick one <laughs> other than getting, like, tormented or, or turned into... you could become a Cenobite, you know, and just like with the doctor, I can't believe I don't know what I was afraid of. <laughs> this is the best thing ever. I don't know, and how is he the most amped up fucking Cenobite? He's totally, like, killing all of those motherfuckers. Anyway, that's a separate issue. Right. But, yeah, good pick. <laughs> Uh, I got 13 Ghosts, a movie yeah. that I like, but I felt could have been a lot better, but I still like it. I like how the house configures, you know, reconfigures every, what, 30 minutes, yeah. hour, some shit like that. Um, and I liked a lot of the ghosts that were trapped in there. I remember watching that in theaters with my friends, and at one point, my my friend sitting next to me had to, like, shake me, and he's like, Oh, you're breathing so hard. <laughs> really? Shut up. That's what he said. <laughs> like, oh, my bad. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't realize. <laughs> it's like, shut up. You're breathing so hard. Fuck. Okay. When, how old is that movie? Like 2001 or more like 2004? Was that rated R? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it had to have been um, 2000. 2001 maybe maybe in 2002 yeah okay like if, so like early 2000 yeah as opposed to mid yeah okay. just because i i had to have been able to get in without um you know like my friend's brother oh like, tickets. right right all right yeah all right yeah nice pick i gotta watch that again because then that part where it that still woman, holds up i feel yeah where she gets oh, like woman. no like um uh the guy's um not mistress but like she she's actually with the guy and then mm-hmm, he turns mm-hmm. on her and then she actually like, gets smashed like and we see that and i was like oh that was kind of gruesome kind of forgetting i know who you're talking about but i forget her death oh like she it's kind of like the the cyclops from um cole where the two like the walls she are just get crushed yeah when the walls and it's see through too, so we see it. It's like oh, like all the the walls are see through. Oh yeah, that's right. It is all. It's glass. Yeah, reconfiguring glass. <laughs> nice pick. Yeah. Okay. Number five, I got Batman Forever. <laughs> <laughs> because of the Riddler. <laughs> the Riddler. Well, there's that one um, Rid Riddle that uh. Um, Val Kilmer and um, Nicole Kidman are like he f- he figured it out first and then he showed it to her and then I guess he was expecting her to not get an answer but she goes a match he's like yeah that's right a match I forgot what the riddle was but the answer was a match <laughs> oh. but I totally uh, <laughs> forget that one yeah. I, I could have put golden eye what, what's the riddle like it's, it's something you you um something you can, oh, what was it? You sit on but you can't take with you. And then the answer, that was from Goldeneye. Yeah, and then the answer was a chair. <laughs> I was not really a huge fan of uh, Goldeneye. In fact, I think Pierce Brosnan is way more badass in in fucking movies nowadays than he was as James Bond. Yeah, um, I think he's the one that wanted to end it, right? I feel like all of them do, cause isn't the new guy wanting out already? Daniel Craig. Yeah. Um, I think so. I think maybe it's just too intense, cause, and he's getting older. But um, like he's fine. They need to bring on Idris Elba, man. A black James Bond. Fuck yeah, a debonair <laughs> black James Bond. <laughs> Cube, I got as number five. Oh, nice. <laughs> That movie I did not see coming. I saw it on a preview for like, you know, fucking, was it New Moon or Full Moon Castle? You know, one of those B-ass fucking yeah. shits. And I was like, oh, that looks, that looks kind of fucked up. Then I watched it. I was like, oh, fuck, this is fucked up. Yes, yes. Um, it's like bloody as a shit. I first saw it like kind of randomly too. 
Like it was on late night on one of those movie channels, maybe Cinemax or Showtime. But it was late night. Oh. And like, oh, yeah, how are people, how are they going to escape? Oh, this guy can do math. <laughs> the the one you think is the Lucky. weakest link, right? It's like, all right, he's the one. Has something to do with prime numbers. Okay, sure. <laughs> I'm kind of wondering why that movie was not a bigger hit. I mean, it's pretty intense. The fucking puzzles are puzzling. Yeah. And they don't skimp on the gore. The only thing I can think of is that, you know, there weren't name brand actors and actresses in there. Right. But, I mean, the movie still fucking holds up, man. Yeah. I just saw it, like, maybe before we started the podcast, and I'm like, fuck, this movie's still great. And I hadn't seen it in long enough that I could, for- I kind of forgot what happened, you know? Um. Yeah, but it, it spawned what? Two sequels and a prequel? Or was it just one sequel and a prequel? I know at least one sequel, one prequel. Yeah. They could have got me on that, but uh, I did not think much of the others. Right. Because in, in the prequel, right, that guy who goes in is the idiot savant in the first one, right? Or that's supposed to be the character? Oh, is that the same? I I kind of forgot about that. I just mm. remember that sci-fi picked up the sequel. Oh, okay. And the puzzles were good, but they cut out the gore, and everything was lit up really, like, bright. Yeah. Which kind of went against the aesthetic of the first one, I thought. Mm. Right on. Yep, number four. Number four, I got Goonies. <laughs> oh, more classic. Like a, more like a treasure hunt, but I mean, they run into some puzzles. Um, like not like riddles, Indiana but yeah. yeah. Um, the one I think they had the hardest time, or the trickiest time was um. Andy. Is that the one who was with mouth? No, no. Um, the cheerleader. The... The cheerleader. I yeah. think it was something like Andy. Andy. It was like a boy's name. A, yeah. A cutesy boy's name for... Uh, when she had to play the music, she's like, I took some piano lessons. I think that probably was the hardest part because she had to read music and no one read music. But she's also playing on bones. That's pretty specific, too. Yeah. I mean, fucking... Like, if you were in a group and nobody reads music, you yeah. know? <laughs> it's like, show me the tab of that shit, you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Else not, we're all fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> and like for them to build all of that all those devices and the stuff with the bowling ball and the key Chester Copperpot you know he had the, the skeleton key um <laughs> yeah that's right yeah it's pretty 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 cool stuff Sean but, Astin with his lisp and his fucking asthma right right and mouth yeah data and a young Thanos as the older brother. Right, yeah. Um, Brad. Is it Brad? I feel like it could be Brad or Brad either. <laughs> Call him Josh Brolin. I got The Imitation Game. Alan Turing and his band of code crackers hmm. solving or winning World War II for the world. Oh, wow. I've never seen that. Oh, pretty good, especially if you like Benedict Cumberbatch. Ah. And I do. So this takes place during World War Two. Yep. Nice. Oh, okay. I, I I've seen the trailer. Yes. Uh, I was thinking they're in the trenches, but no, they're like they're in you know some yeah. fucking think Warehouse. tank somewhere okay. in England or wherever. But... I see. Okay. And they're just cracking codes. They're cracking. They're trying to crack the Nazi codes, and mm-hmm. they eventually do. Um, number three, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. <laughs> really, the Last Crusade? Yes. Although, I still remember the fucking Holy Grail shit at the end. Yeah. Three so, challenges. I mean, three tactics. challenges. So, um, Jehovah. <laughs> Jehovah begins with an I. J. And so, the um, I think it's the path of God, only the penitent man shall pass. Did you know what penitent mean when you first nope. saw that? Yeah, it's like penitent man kneels before God. Kneels. Okay. And then the razor blade? Yeah. It's like, all right, okay, okay, okay. You got it in time. I wonder if you put it together like, okay, I see decapitated heads all over. Okay. Right, something right, something's right. going on here. 
He figured it out through context. He's yeah. like, duck, you motherfuckers. But it's crazy. Hey. Like, remember when he's walking? Or no, oh, the word of God. It's when, um, so it's Jehovah, right? Um, right, right. Because then when he steps through that first letter. It like falls to nothing. Yeah, but then he has to grab onto something. I think that's just a little detail they probably overlooked. But because he's probably grabbing other letters. And you see how deep that thing goes, right? So right. I wonder how they built it. You know, that's some pretty... Um, I'm sure it's visual effects, yeah. That yeah. doesn't sound structurally sound in the <laughs> real world, but yeah. we're dealing with fucking Jesus magic. And then... So um, it gets a pass. So, I, like, those uh, those bad guys, they're fucking Nazis, right? Yeah, they're Nazis, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, but they, they hired, um, like, extra help. I, I don't know where... Alexandria, <laughs> the crescent moon, right? Um, and I think it's the um. So there's the path of God, word of God, blood of God, <laughs> the drink of God. Yeah, and then it's it's crazy because you got to take a leap of faith, literally, and that walkway. He throws is just, the sand or the gravel. Well, he he makes that jump first, and he just so happens to hit it because I think the walkway is swaying, but it's. It's so it's Headspot. camouflaged, right? So like, and then he throws the sand. So, right. All right. And it's like, oh, okay. Got it. Nice. And then he's got to choose wisely. God <laughs> but... is one tricky guy. That God. <laughs> Which cup? And then he's like, it's a cup of a carpenter. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> I know the idiot mm. runs for like the chalice. It's like <laughs> guarantee. Oh, turning into sawdust bones. Oh. That's what you yeah. get, Nazi. Or he's American who supported the Nazi regime, I think. To me, that's Nazi. Yeah. Any kind of supporter. If you gave them money, that's just like funneling terrorism. Oh. But yeah, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Don't move him. The best one. I remember seeing it at uh, Waikiki 3. Nice. Um, we rented it. Oh, and then, dope, and dope. then we bought it from McDonald's. I still have that. Company. Oh, really? I think I bought it from Costco, but maybe McDonald's. I remember they used to do that in the day. Right. I think we talked about this on another. Yeah. So no sec, so. <laughs> okay, I, I got the usual suspects. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, what was the the lineup? What was the line? Show me, give me your shit, motherfucker. Fuck. You. Oh. <laughs> give me your shit, you fucking cocksucker, motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Do you really say it again in English, please? <laughs> what? Okay, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, that must have been the best. Yeah, Cuck that was Stephen guy. Baldwin's finest performance. I gotta say, like, yeah, I have not. Every time I see him, he's either super cheesy or just super ridiculous. Mm. Right. That actually introduced the world to a lot of talents. Fucking Kevin Spacey, Benicio del Toro, um, Brian Singer. So what's the, the puzzle element in Usual Suspects? Oh, um, the the tale that he's weaving about how things came to be and how they found out who uh, Kaiser Soze is, who the guy was, the puppet master. Is it a movie kind of like um, Vantage Point where they get perspectives of different characters? In the same scenario? Almost exactly, except you're told all these different perspectives from one character who turns out to be uh, untrustworthy. Oh, wow. I never saw and it. He so. them for really? Wow. Yeah, just, yeah, you'd like it. Just that lineup scene, because it's on like, a lot of lists, because then that was like um, improv, right? It wasn't scripted. Oh. Yeah. So, like, I think. um. It might have been Stephen Baldwin who set up the scene and like, you know. They all just riffed off that. Yeah. And like, I think all the laughs in there were sincere. Are real? Yeah. <laughs> like Benicio Del Toro. Like, <laughs> like, what the fuck? And they all started cracking up. Yeah. I think those were all sincere. Oh, okay. Sounds interesting. So you get all the perspectives told through one person though. So in yeah. that sense, that could be iffy or not um exact right well yeah it turns out to be unreliable and that's mm -hmm. where the the twist comes at the end he realizes that the narrator has been putting together this fake puzzle 
using names and shit off of a board in back of the the police guy who he's been telling the story to for like two hours. All right, so number two, I have National Treasure, the new uh-huh. Indiana Jones. I actually Jones. liked the first one. Yeah, I actually like. I really like it. A lot of it's history, you know. I mean, and that's John Turtletaub, yeah, the director. Oh, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but it's Jerry Bruckheimer, right? Of very, course. Very action packed, and it's not a boring movie, but it's really cool too. Like, you know, just yeah, um, Diane Kruger is good in it too. Yeah, yeah, I liked her. No, just one clue will lead to another clue, will lead to another clue, and just keep going. <laughs> the Da Vinci Code. Oh, it should have been. Actually, it kind of reminds me of um a less shoot 'em up version of the video game Uncharted. Oh, okay. In fact, I wonder if Uncharted took some of it's a uh, action play right out of the movie because now that I'm thinking about it, a lot of it is similar. Mm. Okay. Like the um the props and the sets. Yeah. Huh. Actually, fuck. Even the whole history and hidden societies and all of that <laughs> kind of shit. That's all in Uncharted too. So. I hope Good. they make a part uh, three, the National Treasure three. Which... I feel like part two kind of fucked it. But they did leave that kind of um, nearly as good, like a hint, right? Like, what's in that page? It could, yeah. and I'm sure there would be an audience for that, especially if they make it good. They did kind of go like too much. Where like, does Nicolas Cage character have, you know, the skill to actually kidnap the president? I don't think so. That that was a little too. Yeah, much. that yeah. that was a little. They went too <laughs> they went too big with it. Yeah, they, they, they too go too big, big with it. it. <laughs> like every every young adult fucking novel series. Why can't it just be a murderous game of teenagers? <laughs> Why can't it just be a maze that these teens are thrown in? No, it has to be about fucking societal problems. <laughs> okay, number two. Number two, I got Die Hard with a Vengeance. Oh, nice. That's a lie. I think. Still my favorite, uh, or at least it ties with the original. For me, though, um, I like them in the order that they are presented. So I like part two. Really? Ugh. Part three? Yeah, you're, you're a completionist. <laughs> I don't like you because you're going to get me killed. Like That's a good follow. That's a co- good cover-up, Sam. And that probably was true, too. <laughs> yeah. Because, so. I mean, Zeus was doing pretty much okay <laughs> until... John McLean involved him in his fucking cat and mouse. Man. <laughs> that exchange. Hey, Zeus. <laughs> what do you call me? Hey, Zeus. I heard your name. That's it. Hey, Zeus. My name is Zeus. <laughs> my name is Hey, Zeus. <laughs> Shove a lightning bolt up your ass, Zeus. <laughs> oh, that was such a good. And that part where you found the gold bar. He's like, that's my gold bar. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there was a lot of classic lines. It's definitely the funniest out of the series, I feel. Because of Sam Jackson. He yeah. could have been the new hey. um, Joe Pesci of the Die Hard franchise. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, Joe, Joe Pesci was great in Lethal Weapon. Okay, 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 okay. They fuck you in it. They fuck you with it. I think that started with the uh, the subway scenario. When they gave him tuna sandwich. We gotta go back. <laughs> they gave me tuna. I didn't order tuna. We're not going back, Leo. <laughs> See, they fuck you in the drive. That's why you never go to the drive. They fuck you in the drive. Oh, wow. Nice. Leo gets. Yeah. Yeah, good pick. Good pick. All right. So before we so. get to our number ones, some honorable mentions. So I have Inception. Hmm. <laughs> Talk about mindfuck. Yeah, literal puzzles. Like, do you know? Um, it's I always found it odd that um, before uh, uh, when Leo was trying to hire Ellen Page to join his team, he kept asking her to draw a maze. So, like, and I, I, from what I remember, it's like he's like, I want you to make a maze. In like two minutes, that'll take one minute to solve. Like, did you get that? No. Yeah, like I thought that was kind of like a weird test, but I'm wondering if it's because I just of, thought it was a dope test that has some sort of interior meaning. Yeah, like that I didn't get, but that I couldn't be bothered with because I was still trying to understand the concept of Inception. 
that is the most expository action film of all time. There, there would be memes like it's a rar and a rar and a rar file and within a file within a file. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Inception, uh, second honorable mention, Labyrinth. Jennifer hmm? Connelly. Hell yeah. And the third one, uh, Source Code. Hey, I really like Source Code. Yeah, it was a good movie. I really enjoyed that one. Um, it's a surprise how Jake Gyllenhaal was able to like ex- escape. But do you think mm. he technically he escaped in another part of his mind? Because he yeah. had to. I think so. It looks yeah. like it left him in a narrative where he happily ever after lived yeah. with that woman on the train. That's crazy. That's crazy. I got Clue, um, oh, nice. Sleuth, and Mercury Rising. Huh. Simone is home. What was the second one? Uh, Sleuth. Sleuth. Oh, okay. It's a... Uh, Feels like it was adapted from a play, but um, it's about the husband of a cheating wife playing like a cat and mouse game with her lover. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Very heavily talky. The original is with uh, Sir Lawrence Olivier and um, Michael, what's his name? Fucking Alfred from Batman. Oh, wow. Michael, Michael Caine. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then the remake is with Michael Caine in the Sir Lawrence Olivier part. And Jude Law in the Michael Caine part. Ooh, nice. So I like both versions, but one is just heavily dialogue, and the <laughs> other one is a little more slick and with the times. I think it came out uh, late 2000s. Ah, oh, okay. Right. So no. lots of uh, Ocean's Eleven cutting with narration. Nice, nice. Okay. Um, number ones? Number ones. I'm giving it to uh, Cube. Oh, nice. Yeah. I guess it was a little low on my list, yeah. but Cube is dope. I, I can't do the math to, like, you know, do it before we get sliced up. It's kind of like a jigs, like a song. Oh, yeah, movie. I'm toast. Like, that is. I would have failed the physical tests and, of course, that math shit, you know. Yeah. They're all prime numbers. How the fuck I'm supposed to know? <laughs> it's somebody's social security number. How the fuck I'm supposed to know? Oh. Yeah, I'm toast on that. Um, but yeah, that was a great one. I would have died. Yeah. But a great one. I would have so easily died. My number one is Saw. Oh, okay. Okay. The the first one. The first one. I wonder. I mean, after that, it's not even puzzles you can win. It's just yeah, you're fucked up. Like, what was the puzzle? The actual puzzle? They're just trying to figure out. They're just stuck in uh, a room. To me, it's it's not an intellectual um, puzzle. It's a spiritual one. Hmm. Damn, man. Is your life worth living in this sort of context? And how badly are you willing to do it? All right. Will you take out your own eye and live with one eye and dig around in the key to your salvation? <laughs> so, yeah. To me, it, it asks that kind of questions that, uh, that I'd like, you know. Yeah. Because I don't know, honestly. I want to say, like, would I dig my fucking eye to get the key? I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> No, no. But you find out who you are that moment you wake up with the contraption on your face, mm. and one way or another, you know, you spend your last moments <laughs> learning that you're a fucking coward piece of shit, or you get a rebirth. F myself up. Nice. Okay, well, that is uh, my top six for puzzle flicks. Puzzled. We won't figure this out later. All right, well, that is it for this episode. Number seven, these boots were made for walking. I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, so uh, what's been going on with you, Mox? Uh, not too much. Just, you know, furthering our New Year's resolutions, trying to stay resolute. I know. Get those uh, scripts done. How's your running going? I missed a few Are days. Are you still... But uh-huh. I, I think it's important that I, I diet. <laughs> also, the diet's been been on point, or at least not really. according to the no. schedule. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm but trying. if you had to choose between the two, you've been more regimented with the dieting than the exercising? E- yes. So, yeah. If I, if I was doing better, I'm probably... Or if I had to pick one, which I'm doing better on, it would probably be the dieting. If I anything. feel like that's the harder one, so yeah. kudos. 
Okay, right on. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, current events, a lot's been going on in... Kind of, it feels that yeah. way. Um, the big news was the false alarm. <laughs> oh my god. There's a hilarious video going on. I didn't even ask you, somebody. like, where were you on? Like, that, that Oh, I was that eight in the morning. passed out, dude. Oh. Dude, that whole thing. I found out about it when I woke up on maybe either Sunday or Monday, and I saw it on the, like, you know, the updates on the phone. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Missile scare, then what the fuck? False missile scare? Because uh, I got it. Um, I woke up like at 8.40. So. P.M., A.M.? Like, A.M. So, like, I, I just, like, I guess they got the confirmation that it was a false alarm. But I didn't even get that. I, I still got the, uh, that initial message. So the actually, first one. yeah, I looked out the windows. I'm like, okay, there's no sirens, no explosions. All down here from here, yeah. Like and then, you figure the sirens would be wailing full blown, right? But then I, I, I looked at my, like I opened up my phone and I got text messages like, "Did you guys get this? Oh, it's a false alarm. Okay, all right, wow." And they're still, they like it. That's still current. Like, they're still trying to. They're still doing investigations. Like, all right, so. Still- Trending, yeah, they, they want to fucking crucify that or those motherfuckers. I know, because then <laughs> I've seen videos where they're like, someone got a manhole open and started bringing people down. And like, really? Yeah, yeah. I feel like Hawaii is one of the states that just overreacts to shit. Every time there's tsunami scare, everybody's like buying up the yeah. fucking Costco's and the but fucking gas. Can you imagine though? Like, like. This is like this is not a tsunami, but there's missiles inbound, <laughs> and they. Then I feel like just die. Yeah. It's Terminator Two. Go be with a loved one. You're gonna escape into the chud sewers. Right. You know how's that gonna work? You fucking weirdo. And now you're a mutant. And you didn't hear the sirens. That's like, oh my goodness. And um, I remember. Like, what, what would your, like, what was your first thought? I mean, or what would your first thought be? Like, we're gonna get hit by a fucking nuclear weapon. Run I didn't, and hide? I didn't think nuclear... Because it said ballistic missile. So I'm thinking like... Oh. Yeah. Then we, then we're okay. We're all G. Yeah. So I'm like... Because it didn't Except, say like nuclear uh, okay. warhead. Because if it was a nuclear warhead, okay. Power ready. <laughs> you know? Oh, I'm, th- I'm thinking it's a nuclear warhead. If it's a ballistic missile, some people are going to get really fucked up. Yeah. And others not so bad. Right, right. And, I live know. in Krylua, so I think we'll be all right. It's mostly like... Kalihi, all of those places. <laughs> Why and I, you guys gotta watch the child. <laughs> no, we. Because if you had to say, you guys are expendable. Well, I'm on the mountainside though, so everybody gonna be running uphill. So, all right. That's true. You're in a level, so you about at the northernmost point centrally. Yeah. And Kent Schools is right next door, so. <laughs> I know um, you're like right at the yeah. gate. Oh man. Okay, yeah. If it's a ballistic, then to me yeah. that's less world ending. Really going in the fucking sewer though, still. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. But and then they, there's video of people at UH just running for the hills. It's like, oh, no one knew. And it was a Saturday morning too. Like, oh wow. Oh, they always catch Hawaii being super stupid. Mm-hmm. Like well, every time you know we throw bottles after the fucking Warriors lose, which is often. <laughs> you did that. Oh, no, not me, but I mean we <laughs> as in the fans or people of Hawaii. Like we are on S- ES- ESPN, ESPN doing that fucking low class idiot yeah. shit. That's that's terrible. Oh, okay. But um how's uh how's the guy oh on oh, oh, Maui. So the, <laughs> let me ask you. So how do you feel? Did that guy was you think he did that on purpose to troll or was he like, you know, I'm speaking well, to me. I feel like the Hawaiian activists do a lot to troll and maybe they are bringing or trying to affect uh, change or civil, whatever the fuck through their trolling. But um, so let's let, let me um, um, mention the scenario. So this guy was at a court hearing and he represented himself and um when he was asked to identify himself he only spoke in hawaiian in hawaiian and the judge continued 
um, I don't understand. Could you, you know, identify yourself? And he continued in Hawaiian. And then I think they put a warrant out for his arrest because he wasn't being... He was in contempt of court. I don't know if that was what, exactly, yeah. But he wasn't um, being um, cooperative, I guess, in a sense. Like, you know, you're in court, what are you doing? And um, so one side saying they have interpreters for people, you know, uh, to translate. Mm-hmm. But the other side saying, you know, the interpreters are there for people who are deaf or can't speak English. So why am I going to spend unnecessary tax dollars on someone who can speak yeah. English? And so that's the other side. And now um, there's, you know, on the other side, they're saying Hawaii, Hawaiian is the official state language. He should be able to speak in Hawaiian if he wanted to. I feel like the problem is in the letter of the law. Just pull it as the official state language. Hmm. Because his side is right. He can be an asshole and (laughs) delay court and pile up court fees. But here's the thing. If he loses his case after they get the fucking interpreter, he can be billed all of that man hour time and shit. And you know what? You can deserve it. Because he obviously can speak English. Yeah. I know you like do your whole point and be like, the point is, this is Hawaii. The point is, this is America, guy. I'm sorry. It just <laughs> is. It's um, just America. But, so but, if they want. Oh, I, let me tell you the other side saying, wait, no, we're not. Hawaii is not part of America. It's still the U- kingdom of Hawaii. We're not. I mean, I guess on your t shirts or whatever. <laughs> And your fucking base camps, <laughs> which is fine. Make you guys flags and all of that. Do all your uo miles and stuff because you know what? Culture matters. It does. It does. But practicality at this point matters too. And when they find you inevitably guilty, you're going to have to pay all of those fees. And also think about all the memes out there. That's or all of the internet is just going to be making fun of your ass. Uh. I don't yeah, know. A lot of them it's are so defending TV. him. Um, but, you know, I mean. Uh, but one, you know what? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, one guy was saying, um, you know, he, he didn't want to speak. He's taking it back to the time when the um, uh, the colonists came by. Uh, and he, he didn't want to use the speak in the same language as his oppressors. And that's why he was speaking in Hawaiian. But then, like that was you, you're just taking it back all the way. I mean, it's different times now. Um, yeah, and the practicality of it, you know, you're in court, and I mean, you're just making trouble. I think that's what it's going when you um comes at down this to, point. Yeah, you just you're just trolling, and you're <laughs> you're making like. I mean, they're trying to stand against America using America's rules. Like, you know what? You want me on your side and we're going to do defend Hawaii. Try come at me with militia and talks of how we're going to overthrow the fucking imperialist empire of America. Then maybe you get me on your side. But if you let me fucking hold signs by the freeway and chant, just get the fuck out of my face with that shit. You know, they can put us on the news for 30 seconds and then I'm just going to look fat holding on sign. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. We're shouting into a void. So until you guys, you know, take up some arms, just leave me alone. Yeah. This would make a good and, um, Lifetime movie. <laughs> see, already Lifetime. So it's going to be shitty. But you know what? I will say this. There is no better time for them to cry about oppression and imperialism and colonization than now because the times are so politically charged and politically lenient and snowflakes are getting a huge voice in the media. No, but I, I, you know, they tried this shit 20 years ago. They're going to be fuck Hawaiians. You guys got to just can get out of here. It's America. They tried this after 9-11. He's got a history of being, of facing that judge. And usually, if I go to oh, court, girl. yeah, if I go to court, I'm, I want to be in and out. Like, I'm well, on a meter. I probably only get like three judges. <laughs> I know, right? 
like court is not the place you want to be. It's just <laughs> it's fucking it's the DMV but worse. <laughs> it's just the worst. <laughs> yes, your honor. Yes, no contest. I plead no contest. Sorry. Yeah, I did it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Go I'm to um, sir. <laughs> go to accounting. Go 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 pay your your citations. All right. All right. Let me just go. Let's just go. You know. So yeah. All right. When some guys gotta fight the system, make a lot of noise, and you know those kind of people can cause change. So go for it. More power to you. Just I don't know. Yeah. You like? Yeah. I, like I <laughs> so, said, yeah. Sometimes it makes me weak though when I see videos like. Oh, well, and this is a Maui, and it's like, guys, are you troublemakers? <laughs> You're troublemakers over there. Oh, like there's this one incident. There's this video of this um, this guy who was double parked, and so like, this local, when he parked like inches from the the driver's side door. Why? Just for being prick. <laughs> so the car was. was the right. car was double parked, right? And okay. yeah, and he didn't like that, so he parked inches from the driver's side. And so this Oh okay. And it's a white guy who owns the car. So he's trying to get out. He's like, Can you move? He's like, Yeah, after I eat. <laughs> like he went full on set up on camera, filming himself eat, and this guy's trying to get in his car. And they go at it. Like was the guy rightfully double parked or like, you know, reasonably double parked? Like see? he was going to be there for a minute, pick up his food and then dig out? I know. Uh, see, because then he started recording after the, like, we don't know what happened. Before. How much got yeah. missed. Yeah. So I don't know if he was parked there for like a long time or, you know, just two minutes in and out. Right. I mean, and, and this, it tipped this guy so much that he, he parked inches from his <laughs> And it's like, okay, and it, it's a white guy, you know, that's too, right? And so now all the comments are race. <laughs> Holy Gotta be. I mean, you can't have that without there being racial conjecture and all of that shit. And um, um he, he, um, uh, what was that? Uh, he called him out. So why are you double parked? And he's like, I don't want no one to scratch my car. And it's, um. It was, I forget what kind of car it was, but it was expensive kind of sports car. And I didn't want anybody to scratch it. That's why I double parked. And now this guy. <laughs> oh, that's him. fucked up then. Ooh. I don't know. The white guy was wrong, obviously. You don't want a nice car. Don't drive in public. Mm-hmm. I understand you. I don't want my shit damaged by fucking ruffians either. But that's because I'm not rolling around in no fucking six figure car. So, prick, you want to come in the thing? Then just yeah. play by everybody's rules. I mean, we agree upon that as a society. Yeah. But that's kind of a passive aggressive way to do it. In the old days, they would have just fucked up his car. Yeah. And yeah. the irony of that is you try to not get your car fucked up, but your actions brought upon the fucked it up of your car. But yeah, that's uh, current events in Hawaii. Mm. Um, if you uh... fucking Hawaii. <laughs> Uh, please uh, visit the website necomedia.com that's yeah. n-e-k-k-o media.com uh, check us out on twitter at cynical underscore mass same goes for instagram and facebook um, so it's uh, eagles and pats this year huh I guess so and I couldn't care less <laughs> I'll just take the eagles because anybody but the patriots sorry boston I love you guys but not the Patriots. I'm sorry. Just, yeah. I'm over the Patriots. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Go watch movies. Take it away, P. This has been a Neko Media Podcast broadcasting from the Blood Cave, part of the Slash Tag Potter family. Family? For myself, Annika Pussyfoot, Mox, and Ono, keep the lights on and check under that bed because there's only one universal truth. No lives matter. That means you. We have candy.